Good afternoon and welcome to the regular meeting of the City of Glendale Commission on the Status of Women. Due to the evolving situation with the COVID-19 novel coronavirus and health recommendations from the LA County Health Department, the Commission on the Status of Women meeting will be available to the public electronically. Due to social distancing requirements, the public will not be able to attend the meeting. The public is encouraged to watch and participate from the safety of their homes to practice social distancing. The meeting can be viewed on local cable, Charter Cable Channel 6 and AT&T UVerse Channel 99. The meeting can also be viewed online at www.glendaleca.gov by scrolling all the way to the bottom of the page and selecting live streaming, which is the third icon from the left. For public comments and questions during the meeting, call 818-937-8100. City staff will be submitting these questions and comments in real time to the appropriate person during the Commission on the Status of Women meeting. Uh, may I have a roll call, please? Sure, Chair um, Perrion. So, Commissioner Rosalian is unable to make it tonight and extends her apologies. With okay. that said, Commissioner Hosea? Commissioner Hosea? Yes, yes. Oh. Commissioner Lavalot? Here. Commissioner Sumerjan is absent. Commissioner, or, I'm sorry, Chair Perrion? Present. Ex officio Gonzalez? Present. Ex officio Ross? Present. Perfect. Uh, item two, regular business agenda. Item 2A, report of reporter regarding posting of the agenda. The agenda for the February 14, 2022 regular meeting of the Commission on the Status of Women was posted on February 11, 2022 on the bulletin board outside City Hall. Item 3, introductions and presentations. Item 3A, presentation. Armenian Bar Association Pro Bono Clinic Services providing legal support to women and girls in need. Um, with that said, Ida Anbarian is here tonight for a presentation. Thank you very much. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. Is everyone able to hear and see this? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, um, good evening, everybody. Thank you uh, so much for having me on um, and giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Ida Enberian, and I am a member of the Armenian Bar Association, but also I uh, currently, uh, I'm, I am a part-time lawyer at the association's pro bono clinic. And I would like to spend some time today to talk about what our pro bono clinic offers. Sorry. Um, and the services it provides to the Glendale community and specifically also how it benefits women and young girls in need. So the um, Armenian Bar Association has been around for over 33 years. Since its inception, um, it has committed itself to providing free pro bono legal services and various legal educational outreach programs. Over the years, the clinic has expanded its legal services to include a wide range of practice areas, including elder rights, immigration, family law, domestic violence, housing, employment, and personal injury, among many others. In turn, the clinic has been able to service more and more segments of the community, which also includes in large part women and young girls. Over, over the years, the clinic has offered its services to anyone that comes through the door, uh, regardless of their race, their ethnic origin, their religion, their gender or age. So long as someone is in need of legal assistance, the clinic has been there to help. However, it is very important to know that 
most of the clinic's clients are disadvantaged and under underserved minority groups, um, which include um, uh, individuals of very low income, recent immigrant groups, some of whom are monolingual, do not speak any English, and um, most importantly, they're unfamiliar with the legal system. And so the clinic has, in that sense, been there for them to bridge that gap and to break those barriers. More recently, in the wake of COVID-19, there has been a general rise in the need of legal services, and um, including those of the Glendale community, um, have experienced tremendous economic hardship, which in turn has augmented the need for free legal services. Um, and for that, the clinic has stepped up in hopes of uh, meeting that demand. For example, um, as reports have shown, there has been a huge rise in domestic violence abuse cases since the onset of the pandemic. Therefore, in October of 2020, the Armenian Bar Association established a domestic violence committee to lend a helping hand and provide permanence to direct legal services for victims of domestic violence. In addition, the clinic has connected with local church leaders and the Glendale Police Department, um, who oftentimes are, um, you know, a victim's first point of contact. Um, so in that sense, they have been able to serve as a liaison um, to inform victims of our services. Uh, with our domestic violence efforts, the clinic, uh, the clinic services are actually twofold. Our first goal is to provide uh, direct legal assistance to the victims, to women and girls who are victims of domestic violence, um, with services such as drafting and filing restraining orders and providing legal advice on, on what their rights are. Second, it also includes um, connecting the victim with other organizations that can provide essential non-legal but relevant services. Um, and as we see very often, a lot of our clients, they are monolingual and they don't speak English, so they have a language barrier that substantially affects their ability to seek help. Um, for instance, you know, it can prevent a victim from even simply knowing or even learning about what resources are out there for them. And second, it can also prevent a victim from taking the step or taking that leap to connect with their organizations. Um, so, for instance, even just making a simple phone call for them would be difficult or even just going in to an organization to get help. They wouldn't they wouldn't know how to express themselves or how to explain their situation. So um, the clinic hopes to step in and help in that sense. And furthermore, um, with these efforts, the Domestic Violence Committee hopes to place survivors in a more secure, independent, and safe position, helping them get on their own two feet, which in the long run will help women and young girls um, achieve economic stability, um, help them have security and equality in the community. Um, and on another note, the clinic has also established regular ties with the City of Glendale uh, Community Services and Parks Department and the Community Development and Housing Department in offering various programs. Uh, for example, there's programs for teens, um, educational programs for seniors, including um, including. And um, with these clinics, which we've held several of them um, in Glendale, we've helped uh, members of the Glendale community clear past records and um, helping those in need with a fresh start. So I think I know that I'm, um, I'm, my time is up. And so I just wanted to conclude that, um, in short, the Armenian Bar has been a very valuable and essential resource in the Glendale community, particularly helping women and young girls, especially for those who are disadvantaged and underserved, who are of low um, income and who do not have the same and equal access, even financially or otherwise, to legal assistance. Thank you so much.
And also, I wanted to also mention that our office is located at the Adult Recreation Center at 201 East Colorado Street. And our office hours are from 1 to 5 p.m. Um, Tuesdays and Thursdays and from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Saturdays. Thank you so much. Please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, do any of the uh, commissioners present have questions for uh, Ms. Ambarian? Okay, Diane. <laughs> we got uh, Lamb a lot. Uh, I don't know. I might have frozen a little bit. Um, <laughs> thank you, Chair Perian. Um, thanks so much for the presentation, Ida. Um, I had a question. You said you partnered with or worked with the um, parks department to put on programs. Did I have that yes. right? Could you, were they um, like legal workshops or were they um, were they something else? Provided. A, I'm so sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Am yes. I, with. With the um, the parks department and the community development and housing department, the parks department provided us with space to provide the expungement clinic, where we had um, clients come to us to help them apply for expungements. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Lamblon. Um Okay, Chair Kojaya. Uh, not chair, I'm sorry, Commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Thank you. Ida, this is very informative uh, information we hear today. I have a question. You said you collaborate with other organizations like Armenian Relief Society or social services. Is that for the legal issues? You work directly with the clinic or how you give your service? Uh, uh, so we um, we have collaborated for the domestic violence services. We collaborated with church leaders and the police department, um, but we 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 would like to uh, collaborate with the Armenian Relief Society because I think there are a lot of um, uh, people who seek assistance from the Armenian yes. Relief Society. Along yes. With Along with the issues they have, there's quite a lot of legal issues that I think if we collaborated with the Armenian Relief Society, we could, you know, uh, uh, together sort of, we could address the legal needs that these clients have. And um, that would be a great collaboration, I think. Thank you. Um, One more question. Commissioner Kojayan. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, do they contact you directly, or you said there is a committee in Bar Association Armenian, or they have to contact your uh, office clinic? Um, so we do have a flyer for the domestic for the domestic violence. Um, there is a committee, but um, our flyer has a direct contact to our clinic. So okay. if if they reach out, they will reach me and I will be able to assist with the clinic. I will talk to them, thank you. Okay. Um, uh, Ms. Ambarian, thank you for your presentation. I uh, do have a, a couple of questions. Um, uh, to, to begin with, I'm interested in what percentage of your clients are um, women and girls? Would you have an idea? I would have to get back to you on okay. an exact figure because, um, you know, it, it changes, but it's a substantially large amount. It is because yeah. um, a lot of them are elderly as well. And, you know, they've had husbands or, or sons who have passed away. And so who had, who had handled all of, you know, any issues coming up legally. So, um, and um, so, so that's how we step in to help. So a lot of them are women. And as far as far as the domestic violence, um, our domestic violence clients are 
are women. I, I, we're aware that it's not only women who are abused in the home, um, but um, f for us, we are expecting a substantial amount to be women and girls who, you know, uh, sometimes even women in a relationship ha who are in, a, uh, in an abusive relationship are stripped of any form of financial independence or any form of independence, even being able to reach family members and so forth. So um, I think in that sense, we're expecting to, to assist women and young girls um, sort of get out of the... Uh, safely get out of an abusive relationship and, and in the long run, placing them in a situation where they can become financially stable. Um, my um, other question is, uh, how is this uh, organization funded? Is it all uh, charitable con contributions? Uh, uh, it is mostly charitable contributions and um, partly um, it, part of it is funded through a grant, um, but we have about uh, 35 attorneys and even our domestic oh, wow. violence attorney who are members of our um, uh, members of our clinic who assist purely on a volunteer basis. So oh, they are wonderful. donating their time and services. Yeah, they're one. They're wonderful. That's wonderful. I have one more question. I know I said a couple, but. Um, how how is I had never heard of this organization and the good that it does. I'm I'd like to know how do you market yourself and put the word out there for your clients and the community to know about the work you do. Uh, we do have a website and we also have social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, um, and. Um, also, uh, we also do a lot of educational programs. So we do uh, segments on uh, uh, Armenian television and, and also do webinars where we also inform the viewers of our services. Um, but, you know, and oh, we do want to expand our outreach program definitely as well to make sure that if you hadn't heard of it, I want to make sure that a lot of people hear about this in the community. Okay. Good to know. Yes. Um, well, um, uh, we, I, I'd like to speak on behalf of the commission, but we would be interested in supporting something like that too, in terms of, you know, getting the word out there. Oh, so, um, yeah. Um, good thank to you. know. And thank you for your presentation. Uh, if there are no other questions, um, uh, May we move forward to the next agenda item, please? Agenda item four, oral communication. Discussion is limited to items not a part of this agenda. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. The commission may question or respond to the speaker, but there will be no debate or discussion. Staff may refer the matter to the proper department for investigation and report. And we do not have any callers at this moment. So moving on to item five, consent items, item 5A, approval of the minutes of the regular commission meeting held on November 8, 2021. Uh, may I have a motion for this item? Minutes? Uh, to approve the minutes. This would be for approval of the minutes. Did you move, um, Commissioner Kajayan? If not, I'll make the motion. Yes. And I second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Rusalian is absent. Commissioner Kojayan? Yes. Commissioner Lambalot? Yes. yes. Commissioner Stemurgeon is absent. And Chair Perrion? Yes. Item six, action items. Item six A, request for proclamation from the from the Glendale City Council. Item six A one, motion requesting a proclamation from Glendale City Council designating March 2022 as Women's History Month and March 8, 2022 as International Women's Day. Okay, uh, Ms. Powers, could you please provide a report for this item? 
Certainly. Uh, good evening and happy Valentine's Day, Chair Perry and members of the commission. Um, so before you, um, it's an effort to promote awareness and education to the community regarding issues pertaining to women. Um, and as such, it, this is before you to consider a request for two proclamations from the Glendale City Council. Um, as stated, one would be for March, designating March as Women's History Month, and in the same proclamation to designate March 8th as International Women's Day. And the other one would be um, for the month of April as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And again, within that same proclamation, April 27 as Denim Day. The chair may receive these proclamations on behalf of the commission um, at a city council meeting. Since right now, council meetings are still being held virtually. Um, and should this continue, the chair can receive these proclamations on behalf of the commission via WebEx. If meetings are open to the public by the time these proclamations are issued, the chair can then receive them in person um, and fellow commissioners can come in attendance barring any capacity limitations that may be set. So for month, for the month of March, um, March is designated Women's History Month by presidential proclamation each year and honors women's contributions in American history. Women's History Month actually began as a local celebration in Santa Rosa, California, where the education task force of the Sonoma County Commission on the Status of Women planned a um, planned and executed a Women's History Week back in 1978. So um, this has CSW roots. The organizers selected the week of March 8th to correspond with International Women's Day, and the movement spread across the country for the next couple of years. And then it wasn't until 1980 where the first presidential proclamation directing, declaring the week of March 8th as National Women's History Week came from President Jimmy Carter. And then after that, subsequent presidents continued to pro proclaim National Women's History Week in March until 1987 when Congress designated March as Women's History Month. Uh, the National Women's History Alliance selects and publishes the yearly theme and this year's theme for Women's History Month in 2022 is providing healing, promoting hope. Um, and this is a tribute to the work of caregivers and frontline workers during the ongoing pandemic, as well as a recognition of the thousands of ways that women of all cultures have provided both healing and hope throughout history. Um, and International Women's Day on March 8th is a global day celebrating social, economic, cultural, and political achievements of women. And Women's Day has occurred for well over a century um, and belongs to all groups collectively um, everywhere. It is an international day as the name implies. So should the commission pr uh, provide direction to request this proclamation, staff would request that the proclamation be received by the Glendale City Council meeting um, on Tuesday, March 1st. Now for the month of April, April 2022 marks the 21st anniversary of Sexual Assault Awareness Month, also known as SAM. And even before the official declaration, SAM was about um, awareness and prevention of sexual assault, harassment, and abuse. The movement um, for this, the awareness came starting in the 1940s and 50s during the civil rights era when there were movements for social change and equality. Um, there was open discussion of the realities of sexual assault and domestic violence. Um, very little discussions, but um, activists for equal rights started to challenge this and started to um, promote these open discussions. And a lot of the efforts during this time were championed by black women and women of color. Um, so this is known, it was not only was it um, equality by race and by um, sex, and so that's called intersectionality, I believe. Um, there was white social activism around the issue of sexual assault. This continued into the 1970s, um, and there was heightened um, awareness and support for survivors. The first rape crisis center in the United States was founded in San Francisco in 1971. Um, and this is the same city where the first um, US Take Back the Night event was held seven years later. And then after that, there was decades of um, survivors and advocates who had mobilized. They called for legislation and funding to support survivors, um, such as the Violence Against Women Act of 1993. Um, and this showed that there were national efforts promoting sexual violence prevention where it was needed. Um, so even before uh, SAM was first nationally observed in 2001, advocates had been holding events, marches, and observances related, related to sexual violence during the month of April. And again, just like we saw with Women's History Month, 
This started with the Sexual Assault Awareness Week, um, and then through various efforts through the National Sexual Violence Resource Center and the Resource Sharing Project, um, they make they helped turn SAM into what it is today and made it a Awareness Month. Now for Denim Day, um, which is observed on April 27 this year, it's the last Wednesday of um, April. It was sparked by female Italian parliament members who protested the Italian Supreme Court's decision to overturn a rape conviction based on what the victim was wearing. Um, so a judge had argued that because um, the female victim was wearing tight jeans that she must have had to help her accuser remove them and thus it implied consensual sex. So after this ruling, women in Italy um, wore jeans to work in protest and this call to action moved, um, motivated the California State Senate and Assembly to do the same because it gained traction here in the United States. Um, then this spread to um, Peace Over Violence, which is a nonprofit that the commissions worked with that helps um, with sexual event, sexual assault, education and prevention efforts. Um, and they're the ones who created Denim Day in the United States and Denim Day in LA. So the first Denim Day was celebrated in April 1999 and has continued ever, every year since. So should the commission provide direction to request this proclamation, staff would request that this come to city council during their April 5th meeting. And these dates are suggested dates. They might get moved around based on um, the, uh, the council calendars, but those would be the recommended dates that staff would take forward. And that concludes my report if you have any questions. Thank you, Ms. Powers. Uh, this item is now open for a discussion. Ex officio, uh, Rob. Hi, okay, so I just have a question. So does this proclamation correspond with any specific events or educational um, measurements sponsored by the commission? Uh, that's a good question. So at this time there, we aren't having events. A couple years ago, the commission on the status of women did have a um, art exhibit, it was right Right at the beginning, before the pandemic, um, there was an art exhibit um, for Women's History Women's History Month, um, and that had to get closed rather quickly. The library does do. There are corresponding um, events that happen through our library department, not necessarily organized by the commission, but they do correspond. Um, and the um, the staff here also helps promote awareness um, through social media of these proclamations and just of the months in general. So to answer your question, sometimes there are coordinating events and sometimes there aren't. Um, Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, hey, well, um, if no further discussion, uh, may I have a motion for this item? This is Commissioner Lambalot. I move to request proclamations from the City Council as outlined um, under action items 6 1 and 6 2 for March and April. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Commissioner Kojayan? Yes. Commissioner Lambalot? Yes. And Chair Perrion? Yes. Item six, two motion requesting a proclamation from Glendale City Council designating April 20, I'm sorry, we did that, correct, Christy? So we took both, okay. So item B, legislative update. Item B, one motion providing direction on legislative agenda. Okay. Uh, Ms. Powers, could you please provide a report for this item? Yes. So um, this report, as you know, provides an update on the bills in the state legislature that are supported by the commission's legislative platform. Um, the state legislature did reconvene on January 3rd for the second of its two-year session and has until uh, this Friday, February 18th to introduce new legislation. Uh, staff does expect that there will be hundreds of new bills introduced in this last week just before the deadline 
So the commission will see a lot more bills for consideration um, during the May legislative update at your next meeting. But for these newly introduced bills, the state legislature has until May 27 to pass bills out of their house of origin. Um, and just as an aside, the governor did sign the budget early action package of bills on February 9th. This will provide an additional two weeks of COVID related supplemental paid sick leave, funding for increased COVID testing capacity, enhancing and expansion of vaccine programs, funding for healthcare related to COVID and additional economic relief for small businesses, including additional funding for the small business COVID-19 relief grant program. So from the bills last year that carried over into this year's session, um, there was a bill that the commission had supported, um, Assembly Bill 1287, um, which was regarding gender price discrimination. This was approved by the state assembly in January. So it was heard by um, all of assembly. And so it passed into the Senate side and it's awaiting a Senate committee hearing assignment. So from there, it will be assigned to a specific committee within the Senate and it will have to pass, it'll be heard and then have to pass out of that committee. And then that committee will just assign it to different committees until it hits the Senate floor um, before it's considered by the governor for it to pass. Um, so besides this bill, there is one new bill introduced um, that is before you for your consideration as it's in line with the adopted legislative platform. And based on the commission's action for this bill, staff will pass along the commission's recommendation for city council approval and any letters of support or opposition will be signed by the mayor and distributed as needed. So this is Senate Bill 914 that is before you introduced by Senator Susan Rubio. It would require California state and local homeless plans to address how they will help domestic violence survivors and unaccompanied women experiencing homelessness. It was just introduced on February 2nd. It has not been heard in any committees. It's still waiting to be assigned to a committee for a hearing. And what this would do specifically is it would require cities, counties, and continuums of care that receive state funding to address homelessness to include domestic violence survivors and unaccompanied women within the vulnerable populations for whom specific systems, specific support systems are developed. And so the city of Glendale does have um, a Glendale continuum of care. So this would apply to the city of Glendale as well. Um, the bill would also require the California Interagency Council on Homelessness to set and measure progress towards goals um, to prevent and end homelessness for these populations. So one of the things that Senator Rubio noted was that domestic violence is one of the leading drivers of homelessness for women um, and that the needs of these women need to be accounted for in the effort to end homelessness. So staff does recommend that the commission support this bill based on the commission's legislative platform. Um, as mentioned, the next legislative update to the commission in May will contain additional bills for your consideration. Um, and that concludes my report. I'm happy to answer any questions. So is um, this item now open for discussion then? If no discussion, then uh, may I have a motion for this item? Commissioner yes. Kujaya? Yes, I alternative number one, the, the commission may approve support for SB 914 as presented in report and recommended council support. I second it. Roll call, please. Commissioner Kojaya? Yes. Commissioner Lamelot? Yes. Mich or I'm sorry, Chair Perrion? Yes. Item C, Women's Recovery Response, Grant Funding Opportunity, Item C1, Motion Providing Direction on Submission of a Grant Application on Behalf of the Glendale Commission on the Status of Women. Ms. Powers, could you please provide a report? Gladly, Chair Perry and members of the Commission, for your last report for consideration is regarding a grant funding opportunity um, for the Commission on the Status of Women. 
So the California Commission on the Status of Women and Girls is soliciting applications for the Women's Recovery Response Grant Program to support existing and emerging needs of women in California who have been disproportionately impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, they are the state entity that is tasked with assessing gender equity in multiple issue areas, including health, safety, employment, education, and others. And so the California Commission is uniquely positioned to support local commissions and the direct service providers they work with to ensure that women's needs are focused on statewide recovery efforts. So the, the California Commission has $5 million in one-time funds that were um, that came about through the Budget Act of 2021 that established the Women's Recovery Response um, Program and for local assistance. And so they are the ones distributing this grant. Eligible application, applicants for this grant have to be one of the following three. Um, one would be a local women's commission established with the city or county government, a local government entity for the purpose of establishing new commissions and or other grant funded activities that support and align with the mission of women and girls commissions, or three would be statewide or local nonprofit with an established history of programming or services that align with the mission of women and girl commissions. So essentially, it's local women commissions who are eligible, local governments who are looking to establish commissions, or local nonprofits that support women and girls programming. And so the goal of this grant funding opportunity is to build a more direct system of support for women in communities across the state by strengthening the existing network of local commissions, um, growing diverse representation of all women's voices through the establishment of new local commissions, and then providing immediate relief to women um, through direct service providers. Applicants can apply for funds totaling anywhere from $25,000 minimum up to $250,000 based on the funding category for which they're applying. The period of performance for projects funded will be 12 months with an anticipated start date of March 1st. The California Commission did have a grant application deadline of February 4th, but did acknowledge that any um, local government bodies such as commissions or councils that were considering this um, and needed to provide direction could get an extension. So staff had secured an extension for this grant um, and our extended application deadline should the commission apply would be this Friday, February 18th. Now in discussion with the um, with our commission's ad hoc committee that is overseeing the implementation of the next report on the status of women and girls, Staff and the ad hoc committee members recognized an opportunity to fund um, the Glendale Commission's next report through this grant, because one of the things that the California Commission is looking for is they are looking for this type of information um, at the local level of how are women impacted through the pandemic and to do that information gathering to then provide those policy and program recommendations. So the previous City of Glendale Commission on the Status of Women report um, that the commission had conducted um, in 2015-16 was produced in conjunction with Mount St. Mary's University. Um, they annually produce their own report on the status of women and girls for the entire state of California. So the ad hoc committee felt that it would be appropriate to work with Mount St. Mary's again on this next potential report. The new report would include the same topics as the previous report, um, along with a new set of topics. Um, it would include data from the 2015-16 report for comparison. There would also be a set of pre-pandemic data from about 2018-19, um, and then the most current data available to create three data sets to compare how women have fared in the past few years in the city of Glendale and how they have fared, especially since the pandemic. The new report, just format-wise, it would be a little bit text, less text-heavy than the previous report, and include more tables to represent data and include an executive summary with colorful infographics. So the list of the topics proposed for the report are included in your report. Um, I won't read through all of them, but I will just say that the data for this new set would be essentially the same with the following exceptions. So um, it, the recommendation would be to add a new metric under demographics to gain a better understanding of Glendale's LGBTQ population. Um, it also to reduce some of the information collected regarding veterans. So a lot of the information collected at the last report, besides just a straight um, statistic on how many female veterans are in Glendale, besides that, some of the 
Um, other data was just very county level. There was no Glendale specific um, Glendale level data. And so that isn't as meaningful for the city of Glendale in consideration of programming. So this report would just identify the total number of female veterans in Glendale, but not go into those other metrics like during the last report. Um, a new metric would be added under maternal and infant health to measure maternal death rates by race in Glendale. And then another new metric to measure the number of women in Glendale's local boards and commissions, such as yourselves. In addition to funding this report, the grant application would seek funding for graphics and printing costs. The application will also include information on how this report will be utilized, including an educational campaign surrounding these findings and community meetings to disseminate this information and to solicit feedback from the community. Um, the, com the commission may ultimately use the information in this report along with the community feedback to produce a series of recommendations to the Glendale City Council, whether it's policy or programming. As far as the costs go, the cost to have the Mount St. Mary's report um, produced um, as presented is approximately $25,000. Um, and staff would be requesting another $5,000 through the grant to cover printing and graphic costs. So the grant application would be for a total of $30,000. And that concludes the report. If you have any questions, thank you so much. Cool. So this item is now open for discussion. Vice Chair Lamela. Thank you, Chair Perrion. Um, first of all, I'd like to um, thank Ms. Powers for her excellent report. Um, the ad hoc committee uh, met um, a couple of times, and we also met with Mount St. Mary's a couple of times, and then there were other discussions. We created um, lists of topics that we thought were important. We reviewed other reports, and um, so a lot's been going on all with the help of Ms. Powers. And like I said, this this um, report included in the agenda is really complete and really appreciate it. And the ad hoc committee um, is excited about the idea of moving forward with another report. It would be great if we got the grant. Um, but as you know, our last report was in 2015, 2016. And so it's very timely, um, we think, to um, commission another one. And I'd also like to thank um, student ex officio um, Roth for her help on this ad hoc committee. Um, Commissioner Kujaya. I want to just add to say thank you that we are going to update this report because this is very good report as we know, our goal is to increase the level of knowledge in our community. And I think in the past, if you remember, um, at that time was our chair, Linda Burns. I think uh, we presented this report to many organizations. One of them was YWCA and uh, many organ. I think also Seroptimist, if I don't, if I remember, Diana, that this is very good report and it's very uh, knowledgeable information. Thank you for updating and bringing this again to the community. Thank you. Um, Ms. Powers, I have a quick question just to make sure I understood correctly. Will the data be uh, driven from the 2020 census? That's a good question. So some of the data will come from the 2020 census. Some of this data is not collected from the 2020 census and comes from the American Community Survey, such as your education level, your income, um, occupation. So there's different sources for the information. There's also a conversation that we had with Mount St. Mary's that the um, the data from the 2020 census and any subsequent um, information collected in these pandemic times um, were are not going to be as accurate. Um, so there's even this recommendation to just kind of hold off for 2022 data or later 2021 data. Um, 
And so that's something that we're exploring of how long we can postpone the data gathering before we actually produce the report. Interesting, um, because I'm wondering, if it, even if a part of it is driven from the 20, by the 2020 census, that's not going to change in 2023. So it would be the other ancillary data sources that we would be waiting for. Those change, yeah. those are updated. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it'd be it would probably be more relying heavily on um, American community surveys. Um, there are other, like for example, the safety section. It almost predominantly comes from our Glendale Police Department, for example. Oh, so some of the information is information that we would produce. Um, we, being the city of Glendale, would produce, um, but they do do a primary. Primarily, they're the ones driving most of the report as far as the information gathering. But yeah. There are various sources. Even if you look through our older or the, the previous report we did, um, you'll see that some data sets were from 2013, some were from 2014. It was just whatever was the most recently available, reliable data that could be included in the report, if that makes sense. It does. Thank oh. you. Um, okay. Um... With uh, no further discussion, uh, then may I have a motion for this item? Commissioner Kojaya? I go to, for one, the commission may approve the submission of a grant to the CC, I mean, uh, California Commission, what was it? California Commission, what? California Commission on the Status of Women and Girls. Um, approximately for grant uh, is going on behalf of the Glendale Commission on Status of Women for the report on the status of women and girls in Glendale totaling 3,000. And I will second that. Roll call, please. Commissioner Kojaya. Commissioner Kojayan? Yes, yes. Commissioner Lambalot? Yes. And Chair Perrion? Yes. Okay. Next item is item seven, reports, information only. So there are no reports, so if we could just move on to commission um, and staff comments, please, Chair Perrion. Thank you, Ms. Powers. Um, do any of the uh, commissioners have any updates or comments at this time? You all happy Valentine's Day night. If you have any going out or. Thank you, Commissioner Kojayan. Um, Vice Chair Lambalot. Uh, thank you. I was just going to say that um, I essentially reported on the ad hoc committee progress during the discussion of the um, agenda item on the um, on the application for the grant. Noted. Thank you. Any other comments? I just wanted to thank Ms. Onvarian for coming on board, and it seems like I can see and hear the gears turning in some of the commissioner's brains and smell a potential um, partnership opportunity in the future. So thank you so much for coming and um, providing us with some information. Thank you for having me and giving me the platform to speak. Thank you. And I would be happy, I would be happy to connect with anybody here. That would be great. Thank you. Well, thank you all for your comments, and I am now requesting a motion uh, for adjournment. Senator, uh, I'm sorry, Chair Perry, and I think I saw a hand with... Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. I did not uh, see that. Member Roth? Uh, yes. Go ahead. Hi, sorry. Um, I was just thinking about the pro bono um, law services. 
and it would be interesting to do a partnership maybe even within uh, the schools in GUSD to kind of spread that awareness of those services, especially because of the domestic abuse going on in households of, you know, younger students in the district. I don't know. I think that would be an interesting project. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And then, and if you have any information, if anybody has information, please reach out. I'll, I'm available anytime. Um, and uh, the more people we can help, you know, that'll make me happier. So um, please reach out with any, any ideas, any collaborations. I'm happy to connect. May I ask for a phone number, please, Ms. Ida? I, I can uh, contact can, you. Uh, Ida, it's okay. I can provide your contact information to everybody via email. Thank you, Christine. Thank you. Well, we, with no further questions, then um, may I have a motion for adjournment? I move to adjourn this meeting. Commissioner Kojayan? I saw a second from Commissioner Kojayan. All right, thank you. So this meeting is adjourned at um, 6.24. PM. Thank you very much. Thank you all.